27, 27 past the hour. This is Kevin and your host and presenter today, Melissa Armo from thestockswish.com. I do want to thank the new folks that have uh, that have just joined us. Uh, let's see, uh, Scott just joined us. Uh, Mar USC, if I'm pronouncing it, uh, Poker Pete, uh, Rebecca, Eric, uh, scrolling up here, uh, MJK, Joe, Bob W, Randy, and everyone. This is online at Trader Central. Welcome, David. Welcome, Doug B. Bubba is here. Bob W is here. SP Trader Shredder is with us again today. We do thank each and every one of you. Welcome, Mike. Mark. Welcome, Rick D. This is online at Trader Central. Start promptly in now just two minutes. Two minutes start time. Thank you again, everyone, and welcome. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central. We want to thank you and welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today. Uh, to the new folks that have just joined us, you're in the right place at the right time for the presentation today. Melissa Armo is your host and presenter today. We are fortunate uh, that it's, uh, well, it's enough talking. It's time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome from the thestocksquish.com. <laughs> It's a beautiful summer evening here in New York, and I am talking to you tonight about the strategy that I trade. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. And today's webinar topic is called Earn a Thousand Dollars a Day Fast, Make It, Book It, Day Done. And actually, I have that saying, I, I always say, make it, book it, stop. But really, stop meaning that my day is done once I make my goal trading for the day. I, I really learned very early on when I began trading that the key to being successful in the market was to make sure that you keep the money that you make. And I also realized very quickly that the time of the day that you take trades makes a big, big difference in how much money you make and also that the fact that you could make your goal in that period and then therefore you could stop. Many people trade in the afternoon and they give money back to the market, but I only trade the morning period and we're going to talk about that today. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com after the webinar. And you can also go follow me at any one of these places. I have a ton of videos on YouTube as well where I talk about the market. And I'll be doing some market updates on YouTube this week for some videos. So welcome. Let's talk about day trading. Okay, I don't know if everybody here is a day trader or not. Some people might be just checking out day trading, but I'm a day trader. So if you've ever thought about it, but not known where to start. You really have to have a reliable strategy. And, you know, making a thousand dollars a day approximately comes up to about five grand a week, okay? And that comes up to about twenty thousand dollars a month. Now for many, many people that would be considered a, 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 enough money to live on or what would be a full-time career. The nice thing about the strategy that I trade and and what I do for a living is that it actually is full-time income, but part-time as far as the hours that you spend doing it. And so if you feel behind the eight ball in the year, we're at the halfway point of the calendar year, actually, it's really hard to believe. It's almost July 4th. We're 
six months into the calendar year of 2015. And if you're feeling like you are not getting where you want to be with your trading, then it's a good time to reevaluate because it is not too late. Okay, it's, it's never too late. You can turn your year around financially. You can turn your trading around financially. Uh, all you have to do is move forward. A lot of times people want to constantly, constantly, constantly be looking back. Looking back doesn't get you anywhere, okay? You need to be in the moment, live in the present, and then have goals to move forward. And you must move forward if you want to get somewhere. Staying stuck in the same place that you're at is not going to get you where you want to be to achieve your goals. You've really got to just kind of like stop the trading insanity. If you've been trading and trading, 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 and languishing over bad trades or losses in the past or fighting stocks all day in the market, you've got to just stop. Stop the insanity of it all because it's really not getting you towards your goals. And again, it's still not too late in the calendar year to turn things around. So it's about changing your routine. And the sooner you do it, the better. Now is the time for you to make some important changes in your life, and it's really never too late. And it really is also about, it doesn't matter if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I've taught people that are over 70 years old. So it really has nothing to do with that. It's about whether or not you just are willing to do it. If it thinks it sounds too good to be true, though, to make $1,000 a day, then stop and think again. And actually, today we're going to go over trades. Where I'm just, I just went over the last week of trades. It's what we're going to go over today, and I'll show you how it's possible. And it can be done. Billions of dollars run through the market daily. So earning $1,000 a day as a day trader means you would only be taking a small piece of what the market offers on a daily basis. Day trading is a very profitable way to trade. And after you book the trade, the money is yours. And that's the really nice thing about it, too. Uh, if someone said something to me recently, they have a different career about the way that they get paid. They're in real estate. Uh, they're a realtor, and I remember from doing mortgages. I mean, I had to wait forever to get paid. I had to wait till the loans got approved. Then I had to wait till the loans closed. Then I had to wait till my company paid me, which was a month after the loans closed. And real estate, if you're a real estate agent, is the same thing. When I trade, one of the nicest things about it is that I have the money right now. Like, I literally could trade today, take the money out of my account today, and have it. And and I, actually, I don't even know any career that you can actually uh, have the money right away unless you're like a waiter or a waitress or a bartender we get tips and certainly nowhere near the income that I make so it's really nice because I make money and I can take it out right away it is a highly lucrative and expeditious manner to trade and profit if you have a specific strategy and a focus in the market as a day trader so one of the great things about day trading my strategy is that it's early in the morning and in the summer, okay, the market is very flat in the afternoons, and there's not that much to do. And also, it's a great, great job to be able to have the whole afternoon and the weekends to yourself in the summer. It's a good time to think like this about making the money, booking the money, and then having your day done. Because the weather's gorgeous, and if you live on the East Coast, you know, in the Northeast, we have winter. So I, you want to get out. In the months of the year, when the weather is nice, go do things, walk, go to Central Park, go on vacations, go to the pool. And so the time really to do this strategy is at this period of the year. So how can you do it? It takes more than hard work to get to this level of success as a day trader, to be able to earn $1,000 a day. It takes ingenuity, which I've already created through my own system, so you've been learning that from me, and a detailed plan of action to trade. The number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a trader is having a specific strategy that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis because you need to be consistent. This type of trading success and financial success in the market is really by pure design. I get up in the morning and I have everything situated and know what I want to do. So what does it take? It really takes having a niche, which, which I had. And if you want to trade like everyone else out there, then your results will be like everyone else. If you want to have outstanding results in your trading, then you need to be different. You need to learn from a trader who is talented and has an edge, like me, because I am very talented. And, uh, and one of the calls we're going to go over tonight is actually a call that I made in Netflix, which was a swing trade, although you could have done it as a day trade as well. I have a unique method and strategy that I trade, which I alone created, and I have an edge. Now, I know a lot of people talk about edges, and a lot of people use this word so sporadically that I think in reference to trading educators and trading rooms and even traders talking amongst themselves I think the word is overused okay 
but the fact is it has meaning and the meaning that it always had the base base meaning of the word is that you need to be able to be one foot out in front of whoever else is trying to get the money now how do i do that i know what i want to trade before the open i'm not waiting till after 10 o'clock i know exactly how i want to take the setup in it and when i see it i pounce on top of it and a minute before anybody else so that is an edge okay and i'm doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over you really do need an edge and i think the problem is that this word has been overused in the trading educational word because and then it's just lost all meaning and then no one feels like they ever have an edge okay the fact is there is something like an edge and you do need one okay because there's too many people out there in the market trying to make money and you want to be one of them you want to be one of the ones that are making money so my edge is one reason that I read the market so well. And it has a lot to do with my strategy. Now, this is a clip chart of the SPY. The market's been back and forth, back and forth, even though really it's in an uptrend. And I know the market showed some red today, but the fact is that the market's higher. I did call the SPY to make a new high when it did last year, and it did again this year, and it's going to do it again. Even though a lot of people are saying the market is showing sl signs of sluggishness and that it's not higher, the fact is it is, and it is, okay? And one of the reasons that i know that is because my strategy when i look at it in the market i can see that it is going to continue to move higher so why is an edge important because you need to go into the market and grab money as quickly as you can as expeditiously as you can and then the idea of making a thousand dollars a day is actually such a small tiny tiny bit of money in the market that you need to be so exact with what you're doing so focused that you can go in and take that kind of cash regularly and get out okay and go out in a fast period of time. So you need to be focused for that. It's really about working smarter, not harder. Learn to work smarter, not harder, to reach the income level you desire. Making $1,000 a day day trading is achievable if you set yourself on the right path. The number of successful people in the market is small. In comparison to the number of people in the market, what is the reason for this? It's really that people just don't have a focus. They are just not focused enough. And not only that, they don't even believe that they could be focused, have an edge, or that it could even be easy. But it can be easy to make money in the market if you know what to do. I'm teaching people that it can be easy because they're making money. And I can't tell you what a difference it makes when people start to consistently make money. It's not even the idea of making money because some people have made money in the past that have been trading or made money in the market and investments. It's the idea of the consistency. Once you get consistent, you can say, wow, I think, I, you know, this is like something that I actually could do for a living. Even if you thought you wanted to do it, but you weren't 100% sure, I'm giving people the conviction to know that they can do it because of the consistency, which I call my trades and, and show them the system, okay, which is after you learn it in the class. But it does not have to be hard. You've just got to learn what to do when and how to have focus. It really is about the learning factor. And once you know what to do, then it's easy. This is one of the reasons that trading is effortless for me now. Every once in a while I say, well, this looks hard and I'm aware of it, but it's not that often. I, I feel like I just let the stock give it to me or the market whenever I am taking my trades. And again, you get to the point over doing something over and over for years that you should be doing better. It should be effortless for you. You should be making a lot of money. And if you've been attempting to trade the market for more than two years, okay, and you're not profitable or you're finding it struggling, then something you're doing probably actually is not a successful strategy. There is an issue there, um, let alone not having an edge. So it's time to evaluate all of that. Part of that is also understanding the value of money and your thoughts surrounding money. A lot of people just don't get it. Every penny that you spend in risk in the market is worth something. It was your hard-earned money that you got somehow from working every penny counts one of the things that i really really am so i mean i have just been never been better at this than i am this year is is finding quality like i just don't even want to do the trade if i don't like it i just don't do it every penny counts that you're risking and what happens is people get sloppy they are so sloppy they take a trade here or there or, or they're 50 50 about it or it's like they're gambling in it or they think well i'm only taking a couple hundred shares it's not that big of a deal or i'm only risking a hundred dollars it's not that big of a deal really if, if, if I gave you a million dollars to trade, would, then would you say it's a big deal? You have to act like every penny that you're risking, whether it's $1, $100, or $1,000 as your risk unit, is important. And if you trade like that, with that right mindset, that money is valuable and you respect it, whether it's a penny or a dollar or a million bucks, 
then you will see that you can be very, very honed in and focused to get to the point where you're risking more. So you get to the point where you're making more and then you're really, really rolling in it. And I think it's about the fact that people just get so sloppy with their trades, but I'm not sloppy with I, what I do at all. I'm very, very, very specific. So I say align yourself with like-minded people. This is a picture of me. Uh, this is what I look like. And, you know, I'm one of those people that has a great, great attitude through years of experience and learning and process and going on my own journey about wealth and money. One of the reasons that I do well is I'm really good at reading live money as it's moving in the market. Okay. But I have a full understanding of how that works and the psychology behind it in reference to your brain when you're thinking. So be responsible with your choices when you trade. And act like you're risking a lot of money and have a lot when you do it. And you will find that the market respects people who think like that. One of the, I went out today. I'll just tell you this is my day before I talk about the trades. I got up today. I woke up late. I didn't go to the gym, what I normally do in the morning. Then I ran the trading room, did two trades today. There wasn't that much to do. Did two things for small moves, got quick out, so the market was going to be sideways or possibly lower. Got done with the room at 11 o'clock got my work in and walked up to Whole Foods, grocery shopped, and had my groceries delivered, and walked back. And this is a picture of Central Park, 30 minutes from where I walked up to today. It was a glorious, beautiful day. Came back, did some things around the house, took a shower, and I'm doing the webinar now, and afterwards I'm going to have a glass of wine. That's my life. My job is done at 11 o'clock. I was out, you know, carousing about the city this afternoon. It really, you can have the dream life that you want. I think a lot of people just don't believe that they can. But it, it will take some focus for you to do it, okay? you got to get to the point where you say, I'm really committed to doing this, and I'm really going to learn it, and I'm really going to take it seriously. Like I was saying, people lack the focus. But success is contagious. And when you align yourself with like-minded people, and I'm a successful person, you really start to see that it's possible. Why? Because you see... You, you connect with me, like my friends see it with me, and then they're connecting with me, and then I'm meeting other successful people. And, and, and you, there's a lot of successful people actually in New York City. So success is contagious. If you're hanging around people that are not successful and are whining and negative all the time, that's not gonna get you towards your goals. And that's one of the reasons that I have my live trading room closed off. Nobody can see anybody's comments but me. Everyone is independent when they're doing this. I'm in charge and I'm running the room and I'm calling the trades and I know the right mindset. And so I'm calling the trains and I'm the one that's directing the positive energy in the room and, and it makes a, makes a big difference, okay? In fact, I had someone, I had to do something yesterday. I had someone fill in for me and run the room and he sent me the most wonderful email afterwards. He said, I've never been in such a positive trading room. Everyone is so happy and people really are focused to know what to do. He said, it's so different from the other rooms that I've been in. And I said, of course they're happy, they're making money and I taught them to be focused. Okay, if you're in rooms that have no focus, it's like bizarro world to me. Okay, you should be getting up in the morning and watching what you're doing and focusing on one trade or maybe two. Now, let's talk about how to make a thousand dollars a day and how much money you have to risk. You basically need to risk between four and five hundred. All the units I'm going to go over today are going to be based on you making a thousand dollars a day. So, for example, if you made three risk units a day and you risk five hundred, that'd be fifteen hundred on the low end. Six risk units, which you could have if the trade goes to a uh, medium target, three grand. And then if a trade goes to what I call the dream target, you could make 10 risk units. And this is possible, which would be up to 5,000 on the high end. This is with a risk of $500. So I'm going to use this as an example all day because we're talking about trades and the purpose of the webinar is to talk about making $1,000 a day. So I'd risk between four and 500 if I were you, if I want to make this kind of money. And that's where you get to the point where you're making 20 grand a month because that's basically what $1,000 on a day average is. Now, how can you do this? How can you make $1,000 a day day trading? Number one, focus on one strategy, which I'm gonna talk about today, which is my strategy, which is golden gaps. You pick the best golden gap possible each day. How do you do this? Using a 26 point rating system. Then you risk a amount between four and 500 each trade, okay? You take an entry in the best qualified gap, meaning let's just say you had five you looked at, you take the best highest rated one, and I take the entry in the one minute chart, which I'm gonna show you today, and then also you do not trade when there are no good gaps, like I didn't trade on Monday. So then that's the other thing you have to do too, because you don't wanna trade when there isn't anything good, 
because then it's like you're wasting money. It goes back to the old philosophy I was saying earlier. Don't be irresponsible thinking, well, I'll just take a little bit of size or well, I'll just risk this much. No, I really don't, you know, encourage people to do that. You have your set risk. That's what you take. If you have conviction, you do it. If you don't, you don't. Okay. There are a few critical factors though that must be present in your trading if you want to make $1,000 a day every day you trade. If these critical elements are present, then not only can you make $1,000 a day, you can make more than that trading. And as time goes on and you increase your risk, really the sky is the limit in the market. The only difference between you making $2,000 a day or $1,000 a day or $3,000 a day is the amount of risk because it has to do with your sizing, okay? Many people fail however, to have each of these critical pieces that are extremely vital and relevant for a trader's success, okay? What are they? Number one, be focused, okay? You've got to be focused with what you're doing. Number two, do one strategy, which I do, okay? Which is gaps in the morning, that rate well. Number three, you pick one direction to play. I like to focus on shorts, Okay, so I'm going short most of the days of the year, not long. Although you can use a strategy for longs if you prefer. But the idea of focusing on one direction makes a huge difference. And number four, know how to take the entry, which I teach in my class. Many, many people, even if they like something or know the right direction, have no clue where to get in. They don't know where to put the stop. We were having a whole discussion about that in the trading room actually today. So how can you make $1,000 a day day trading? Focus. Focus, 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 all right? I had a lot of focus. This was a gap from last week. It was Oracle, but I'm going to go over this. The strategy has to be present. Now, this is a one-minute chart, but again, my strategy is gaps. So what happens when the stock gaps? Well, the stock closed up here in Oracle. This was last week on Thursday. It closed up here around $44 and some cents. Then it gapped down, and it opened around 41 something, 41.80-ish. So the actual close from the prior day into the open of the next day is what a gap is. The size of it could be small, it could be big. If Oracle had opened here at 44.60, it still would have been a gap. And you still could have rated the gap, okay? But I'm just telling you the gap is the strategy, which is intact. And then you have the stock pick, and then you watch it how to trade. Now, I name my strategy Golden Gaps because it's like finding gold in the market because it is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap and has a large move. It is called the Golden Gap because institutional traders and investors are making and creating the gap. A Golden Gap rates 20 points or more per the 26-point rating system. And this is what I teach. This is how, what I trade. This is what I do every single day. In the case of a bullish Golden Gap, institutions are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. And in the case of a bearish golden gap, which is what I prefer because I like to short, institutions are selling and are shorting the stock on the day. Therefore, the stock moves lower on the trading day. Okay? This is why I prefer bearish gaps. I really prefer bearish gaps because gaps that gap down have two things happening them to create the gap. Therefore, they have double the potential for a move. They have selling and they have shorting. Now, I will tell you, you've got to understand the power of shorting. When shorting happens, and again, this is why I like the short side, which I mainly focus on in my class in the room, you have a lot of panic. This was a chart from Adobe from last week. You have panic that happens, and it comes in quickly. So going back to the idea of trading quickly and being done, sometimes I'm going to trade for five minutes. Sometimes I'm going to trade for 10 minutes. Sometimes I'm going to trade for 30 minutes or an hour, which would be considered long, but it still comes in so fast. That's how I'm able to trade and be done so early in the morning and then go out and do other things in the city. It's, it's the power of shorting is that you get the panic. So you can still go long and get momentum moves and you can still trade them with gaps. But I'm saying that the power of shorting comes in because you get the panic, okay? In order for a trader to make money shorting the stock, you have to have selling action in it. The stock has to have selling action. And in order for a stock to move down aggressively, okay, it has to have panic action in it, meaning fast, quick, okay? That's what I mean by aggressive. In order for a stock to move big, it has to have money moving it. It has to have a lot of money moving it, like not just a couple of traders shorting it. You really have to have money that's moving the stock and selling out of it for the panic. So who makes these gaps? Large institutions, hedge funds, and banks. They, they're the ones that make gaps in the first place. So you've got to find out, is this stock gapping down and going to be a long? Is this stock gapping down and going to be a short? 
you have to know which direction the large money is going to flow. So what I did was when I was trying to figure this out on my own, I devised a formula to find the good ones, to rate and qualify the gap so that I had the confirmation and the conviction that the institutional money was with me if I wanted to short it, meaning that I get the selling action. Okay, This is where the whole sense of urgency comes into the stock and you get the red. Okay, I have the, my candlesticks red and the shorting. And then the action is that you get sellers. This is why, though, gap trading is very powerful because it happens quick, you get the panic, and you're trading on the side of the money. And you have to have that money moving a stock or you won't get paid. So what do I mean by institutional money? I mean large amounts of money, millions of shares that come into a stock on any given day and actually push you to move it down. Now, I talked earlier about this, and again, I prefer the shorts, but I will tell you that I'm excellent as well at calling longs. And Netflix had a gap that happened back at the beginning of the year. Actually, it's had, it's had, it had another gap. But the one that happened earlier in the year in January, I called a swing trade on. There was another gap here, and I called this too. You could have done a day trade on this or a swing trade, although it was late. But this is the one I did the letter on. I have a swing trade letter as well. This was a great call. At the time here when this gapped up, this was uh, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful positioning here if you wanted to go long Netflix for an overnight for the longer term. The swing trade call I made in this, and again, this is a gap. So whether you day trade or swing trade, same principle, it's a gap. But I'm showing you here the power of institutional money, and that's the example here. Even though I day trade, you can do these for day trades, but you can also do them overnight. I'm showing you it's just the idea of the money. The, en the entry was around 410, 415. This is just the day of the gap you get in it, okay? Stop is 380. Risk is about 30, 35 dollars, depending on your entry. First target was 435, 450, 465. They all got hit. Now, I did this back in a webinar I did in January, before, before any of this even happened. And I just plopped this in this webinar because it was one from I did earlier in the year. What did this stock do? It, it went. It went to the whole shebang, okay? If you had taken 100 shares of the swing trade, you would have made it almost 30 grand with 100 shares of it on the call that I made in January. Now, that's six months, but you would have made almost $30,000 taking 100 shares of Netflix in, in, in six months. That's phenomenal. If you had the ability to take 500 shares, you would have made $147,500. And this was approximately as of last night when it was gapping up, but actually ran up a little bit even over the number I'm giving here. And if you had the ability to take 1,000 shares, which some people I'm sure would that are here, you would have made almost $300,000. It was a 70% move from the swing train call I made. This is the power of gaps. This is the power of golden gaps. This is the power of the calls that I made, the ability that I had to make the call here and the call here is because of my rating system that I can read gaps. And you can day trade it or swing trade it. Now for fast money as a day trader, I like to be in that quick, but I got to tell you, even if I did swing trading consistently, this is fast money in a swing trade. The stock went to the dream target in six months. That's unheard of. Okay. But it, I knew it, and I made the call, and, and it worked. You don't know the timing when they're going to go to these numbers, but I did know what the numbers are, but I'm telling you, this is fast money in a swing trade. And a huge run-up, 70% in six months is enormous. Okay. So how do you read institutional money in a chart? Gaps. That's how I read it in Netflix, and that's how I read it in the market. How do I figure out if the gap is good, if it's a long or a short, by looking at my rating system. I have 26 points, you just check it off on the list. You tally everything up, and then if it totals 20 or more, you know to do it in the direction of the gap. Again, it's easy. It doesn't take you that long to figure it out. You just gotta know what to look for. And once you know what to look for, then you just do it. It doesn't have to be that complicated or complex. So my system measures the gap by rating them on a daily chart to find the stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. That's what I'm looking for. Number two, a big move on the day, because I like the move. Okay, and again, I like it quick. Early confirmation of the bias in the move, which I'm looking for between 9.30 and 10. And then precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-reward potential. And for me, that's like about three. 
Now, some days I make more than three. Some days I make a little bit less than three, but I like to get three. It's hard for me to take a trade if I don't know that I have the potential for at least three, okay? So if you're risking $500 in a trade, your goal every day is to make $1,500, not 1000 Some days they will only go two hours and you'll make 1000 Some days they'll go four and you'll make two grand, okay? This is if you risk $500. These are the examples we're talking about today because we're talking about making 20 grand a month. Now, one week of trading with a $500 risk for the profit. Let's go over it. I just I just went over the last week. This is all we're, we're going to go over right now. These are the trades that I called in the live room in the last week. And again, Monday, there was no trading. So it actually wasn't even a full week. Anyways, last Wednesday was Adobe. Now let's look at it here. This is Adobe on the daily chart. So this was a short. Okay. The stock went red. The entry for the short in Adobe, now we're on a one minute chart, okay? You decide you like Adobe in the morning, then the market opens, and then you short Adobe if it sets up, which it did. Right in here was the short, and it fell off a planet, okay? So you're in the trade here, and you're out of it here. So you're in the trade here approximately 9.35, and you're out within 30 minutes. So if you risked around 500 bucks, 5.95, Okay, you were short the stock and you could have made 2125 in the day in 30 minutes. Okay, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade to happen very, very quickly. And really, you know, again, you're done. You're done by 10 o'clock. Okay, you're done, you're in, you're out. Boom. The idea of your day being done. You're not going back. You're not keep trading. You're not trading, 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 trading. You're just seeing the trade. You're doing the trade and you're out. You're, you're making the money and you're booking it. So you're in quick, you're out quick. And I also use stops. The stops tell me, and in the case of Adobe, you, 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 have, to, you have to know. Like, do you see how this action here, this is what I'm talking about, about institutions. This, these bars here. Are happening I, this is flat again I know it's hard to say but like if you were watching this live like I was like this is happening like whoosh, like that and it's like and it's going so this is happening very quickly so it looks all nice like and slow here but it's actually not but that's the beauty of being able to make money really fast okay now the next day was Oracle we already talked about the Oracle so this was the following day the Thursday after the Adobe so actually Oracle was a beautiful, beautiful short. This tail, this tail here is where I shorted it. Very exact, very specific. Now I also want to point something out. Oracle ended up flipping on the day. I got out, made the profit very quickly, was out. It flipped. I want you to see what this did afterwards. Look at this. I would have never, 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 never bought that. Okay. Look at what this has done after this. This is almost to the low of the previous day. And actually, I don't even see it was closed here. But look at this. Okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This play is a short. It was a short in the day, and it's a short here. See that? Now, Oracle, okay, stock closed up here, gap down. You short it. Boop, and it goes. And here it is. Very, 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 very quick. Price of the entry was 41.85. Stop is over 42.10. Risk is 25 cents. So on 2,000 shares, again, your risk needs to be the same or equal to or close to in every trade was 500 bucks. Exit is 41, and your profit is $1,700. This is a nice trade. It was over three. Your goal was three. So your goal was 1,500. It went to the target. You made 1,700. You're in it for less than an hour, and you're and you're off with your day. Okay. Sometimes trades are done in five minutes, sometimes they're done in 10 minutes, sometimes they're done in an hour, sometimes they're done in 30 minutes, but I'm never trading in the afternoon. Does everyone understand this? And if you don't ask me questions, I never know what people know and what they don't. I don't know what the range of people is here of their knowledge. Somebody tell me, they know nothing about gaps, they know nothing about trading, what? Does anyone have any questions? Because I'm not seeing any questions and I don't want to, you know, talk too advanced here where people miss what I'm saying. You are looking for Oracle on the daily chart. The stock is gapping down. You get up in the morning before 930 and you're going to rate it based on the 26 point system. Then you're going to say, wow, this is a good one. Oracle is a short. And then once the open comes in, you know where you're looking to short this. And when you see it, you take it. 
And then you also know the targets ahead of time. And when it gets to the target, then you get out. Okay, and you can even have the order uh, out there ahead of time in the market if your platform set up that way to fill you at the number. I don't trade like that. I use hotkeys, but you could. Yes, I call. Well, actually, DSC has asked me, do I call the target exit price as well as the entry price? I call the entry and the stop in the room, and I take it. I, I call it when I'm taking it live. But I actually put the targets in the room in the morning before the market opens. I even put the targets beforehand. So you would know where you're going with it before we even take it. But then when I'm getting out of it, I say, take it, take it, and we get out of it. So I also say, take it live. But I also tell you way before the open where the targets are. So, But in live time, I'm saying, take it, and we're out. Eric is saying, isn't that a lot of money or risk you have to purchase a stock? First of all, we're not purchasing Oracle. We're shorting it. We're borrowing it from the broker as a pre borrow to short the stock. So we're not buying it. Second of all, I'm not buying Oracle and holding it overnight as an actual uh, long trade. In other words, I'm not, I'm not going and uh, buying Oracle and holding it overnight. So I have day trading buying power. Day trading buying power is different from overnight buying power because you get leverage from brokers and you get more leverage from a broker taking something as a day trade than an overnight. The leverage you get from the broker varies. You have to check with brokers. There are retail brokers and proprietary day trading brokers. The actual amount, if you took 2,000 shares of Oracle at this price point, you would have needed 83,700 in buying power. If you had a retail account, you would have needed about 20 grand to do that. If you had a prop account, you would have needed approximately $4,000 to do that trade. So that's pretty darn good. Because if you had $4,000 in a prop account, you just made 50% of your money in that one trade. You just, you just made 50% of your account in that one trade at a prop place. But they're different types of brokers. And if you don't understand that, you have to read online about it or you can email me and I can send you a referral. Does that make sense? Okay. But no one's purchasing anything. You're shorting the stock. You're using day trading buying power. You're flat every day by four. In fact, you're flat before noon. And there are many, many different types of brokers out there and some that will give you high leverage, but that's fine because you're flat and you're using stocks, okay? So the cost price point of a stock, you do not need in the money. And is that clear? You do not need a bazillion dollars to do this. If you did, how do you think I'd have a huge business with lots of clients? Well, I could still because there's a lot of people actually that do have a lot of money. But, you know, there are people that are trading with me that don't have a bazillion dollars and are doing very well. And there are days sometimes when they have five grand in their account and they make tra have trades where they make over $1,000. And that's like a 25% gain in their account. And they're at, at, at prop places. Okay. You need to know what to do, though. All right. And take the trade when I call it. Now, let's look at the next one here. This was Friday. Friday of last week. There were two from Friday. There were two good ones. And every once in a while I will do two or good, if there's two good picks, I'll call or look at two good picks. But I try to focus on one, but there were two I liked on Friday. Anyways, on Friday, if you did the one from Friday, if it was FSN, FNSR, stock closed the night before at pier 2220 and gap down. Gap down here to 21 something, okay? This actually, if you held this all the way down to the dream target, it made it. I said the target in the morning before the stock opened, the dream target was 1950. Low in the day was 1955. How about that for exact? But anyways, the morning trade was way, way before that. And so we're going to go over the morning trade. The morning trade in this, if you shorted this here and was out of this here, you'd be done in five minutes. As it turns out, the low in here is around $20. The stock ran down more than this, though, on the day and reset up. So you could have made even more money in this if you took two trades in it. But the goal is to be done quickly. Price of the entry of the short, though, for the main trade, the first trade, was $20.85. It was a $0.25 cent risk. Risk, again, is $500. You're out, boom, drop into the drop. You could have made $1,600. Again, a wonderful risk-to-reward trade, which is 3.2. And you're in it for five minutes. Five minutes. Again, you could have reshorted this. It fell. You are actually gone out of this here. But it reset up again, rallied, and you could have shorted it and got another buck out of it. But the quick, quick trade was 80% of the move. And you're done in five minutes. 80% here, again, this idea of the shorting, the panic, the time of day, the quickness. Look. Look at that. There it is. 
If you had a choice to be done with your day in 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'd take this all day long, every day, day after day after day after day, rather than sitting and languishing in trees or waiting for them to go. You know, it's really not that hard to find stuff like this that does this all the time. But many, many people have no idea what they're looking for. So then they can't get it. And they're waiting till after 10 o'clock to try to find something or see something or wait for it to set up. You know, you could be waiting forever. Meanwhile, the move is gone. The momentum happens into the open. Now, this was the other pick from Friday. This was more of a snaily one, the way it's set up compared to the F FNSR, but it had money in it. Stock closed up here at 1550, gap down here to approximately 1250-ish, and it was a short, okay? So you would look to short the stock here, and it went right to the target. This, this went to the target in five minutes. You don't always have that again, but this did. And the risk to reward in this is different because the way it's set up, it just happened to go right to the target, and it had a larger stop for the payoff. 20 cents was a risk in this. So you could have taken 2,500 shares if you're risking 500 bucks. You shorted it at 1245, stop is 1265, and you were out into the first drop. Five pennies from the target out. $12 was the target. Profits 1000 bucks. Risk to reward in this is two, but you're in the trade for six minutes. So you make $1,000 in six minutes. You make $1,000 here in six minutes. You could make $1,600 here if you'd done this trade in five minutes. In this trade here, $1,700 in less than an hour. In this trade here, $2,000. I mean, this is, you know, you just have to have the focus, the strategy. You got to know what direction you're playing. You got to know how to take the entry. And you got to know where to get out. If you know all of that, you can do it. And it's not hard and it's easy. And you can be done quick. Many, many people don't have the focus, and they definitely don't have the type of eye that I do, which is my rating system to tell me the pick, which is the stock symbol, because it's really the stock symbol to know. Because how do you know if somebody's going to go do something like this? If you wait on the scanner, it's too late, the sell-off has happened. And my rating system tells me in the pre-market that this is going to be good. And therefore, when the time opens and the market opens and the stock sets up, I'm right in. I'm in, and this is my edge. My edge is my rating system. My edge is I know how to take the entries. My edge is I know how to do the stops and what the targets are, and I know how to read live price action when it happens very quickly into the open, and I can read it in the first 60 seconds. And that is a skill, and it, it's something you can learn from me, but that is the edge. And I'm telling you, if you want to move out in front and trade and make this kind of money quickly, you can do it, but you've got to learn how. But this is, you know, it's fantastic. Let's go off to the next one here. Oh, okay, so Monday, money, no trading. No money, no trading for the system, nothing rated. Again, focus, focus, focus. Use your brain. Some days there's nothing to do, and Mondays are typically slow, and it's not earning season. Let me just answer some questions here. What about slippage? There, are, I think I'm taking more sides than anyone in the room. I don't have slippage that often. Have I never had slippage? No, sometimes I have slippage. Sometimes some, I have slippage when a machine if it stops me out, poops me over something, and then I have slippage. Does that happen every week or every month? No, it doesn't. It does not. It happens if I get stopped out of something, and I don't take that many stops. And I do take size. But I will tell you that I trade stocks that have large volume, Eric, so I don't really get hurt in anything. Uh, if you're trading stocks that are wiggly, jiggly, whippy, and low volume, yes, that can happen to you. But I don't. I don't because I don't want to be a large position in any stock and because I'm trading with several thousand shares and I risk more than $500 at, at, on, on my trades, even though I'm using this for this example. I risk more than $500 in my position and I, you know, some trades I've taken 10,000 shares and I don't want to move that stock. So I have to trade things that actually have volume. And so I don't really have a problem with slippage because I'm in stocks that are, that are very, very active, fluid. I call it uh, a fluid action, okay? It's the jerky kind of action or people putting incorrect stops in that pops them out, but I know where the stops are supposed to be. Uh, hey, Melissa, what about losses, drawdowns? Do they all work? Of course they don't all work. Of course they don't all work. I don't know if that was a serious question or not. That's like asking me if I've ever taken a loss. But to be honest with you, I, I am on a roll. I am in a roll, and I think everyone in the room, at come earnings season in July is increasing their risk. We were talking about it today. I 
I have never traded a better in my life, but quite frankly, this is exactly the way it should be. I have never traded better in my life than I'm trading now. And, I, and I'll tell you this right now, but I want to stay on pace here. I'm going to be on national television, and there's a reason for that, because I am incredibly, incredibly, incredibly good at what I do. Incredibly good. Okay? There is no one better at reading this stuff than me. So if you're interested in learning from me, don't wait around because there may be a time that you don't even can't even learn from me or talk to me or take the class from me or if I'm even teaching it the price of it could be 50 grand because I'm going to be on national television very soon so you know I know what I'm doing here anyways let's get back to this <clears throat> uh, the next gap here is Sonic okay this was yesterday stock closed up here at 34 something all right, and gap down. Gap down here to $32. Gap down, shoot. And this had a nice sell-off, okay? Here is the Sonic. Now, you could have actually taken this here. You could have shorted this here and got all out. But this was a little bit big of a stop in here. Now, sometimes I do take big stops, but sometimes I kind of wait to see if I can get a better entry. But this was the first aggressive one. You could have done it and been all out. This was a nicer one in here. The second set up the second play. You've got more volume going on in this by this time. You could have shorted the stock here. Stop. And here's the drop. Okay. Again, the trade is happening in 30 minutes. So you could have taken this been out in five minutes. You could have taken this been out in five minutes, taken it here and been out. Either way, it's a beautiful sell-off. Price of the entry in the second call was 31. Stop is 31.20. Risk is 20 cents. So on 2,500 shares, it was a risk of $500. Again, I'm using this, but as you get better, you can risk more over time. Okay? And that's how it works. Exit 30.15, although I would tell you this kept dropping. This really, really, really just got pummeled yesterday. Total profit was 2,000. Four risk units. This is a nice trade in 30 minutes. Look. Boom. Out. Okay? Really nice sell-off in this. Again, institutional money, institutional selling, all right? I wouldn't use stops if I never took a loss, G-Trade, okay? But I've always used stops, and I always will. And why? Because, again, going back to the beginning part of the lecture, I'm responsible with my money. I, I didn't get to this place in my life right now. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not being responsible. I'm responsible in my trading. I'm responsible with my own money, with my spending, with my risk, with, with my system, with my business relationships, with my clients, with my uh, friendships, with my family. I'm a responsible individual. Okay, And I take responsibility for the choices that I make in the market and the money that I risk. If you are not a responsible person, you're going to have a hard time trading and making money and being successful. You can't look at this as gambling. I take it seriously. This is my job. I've always taken it seriously. I take money seriously too. So, you know, you have to be responsible. And it would be irresponsible to trade a system that had a large amount of losses or drawdowns. I wouldn't be doing this every day of my life, and nor would I be teaching people this system or charging them money for it if there was big losses or drawdowns. My system doesn't have that many losses or drawdowns. It works, okay? Do you sometimes take a loss? Yes. That is part of trading. And if you don't understand that, then you really shouldn't be a trader, okay? Every once in a while, you will have to take a loss, but that's why you put in a stop. So let's go over the results. The Golden Gap system gives you a high percentage success rate. Here's the week of trading gaps. Wednesday, again, this is all if you risk 500 bucks. You could have made 2250 Thursday, 1700 Friday, 2600 Monday, no trades. So actually, this is only four days of the trades. And Tuesday, $2,000. Total risk per day was around 500 on average. And the total amount made in a week of trading with one day off and no losers. And that's correct. And again, I said, you know, I am on a roll here. But I've been doing this for seven years. Okay? You should be getting better. I should have more. I sh if I could trade every day and never lose, I'd love it. Who knows? I'm not even going to put it out of the realm of possibility that could happen. I'm not even going to put it out of the realm of possibility that could happen. Here, how about that? There you go, G-Trade. Because I'm getting better every day. So, anything's possible. And if that ever happens, then my R is going to be like $25,000. <laughs> but for now, it's not. Anyways, total you could have made is $8,550. And you know what? That Netflix trade. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, that Netflix trade. It's just... You know what I was figuring? I was thinking that, who was I talking to? Oh, I, I was talking to my manager last night. I said, you know, if I'd taken 5,000 shares of that, if I'd taken 5,000 shares of that, I would have made a million and a half dollars. 5,000 shares, 
5,000 shares. I really, it really is not a crazy amount of money that I would have needed for that. 5,000 shares if I would taken that Netflix trade, that swing trade, it would have made a million five dollars in that. And I made that, I had the call. But I would have had to take 5,000 shares of that. Anyways, I got off track there. Um, anyways, so here we go. $8,550. You could have made risking 500 bucks. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, no trades, and Tuesday. That's being in the room with me and not trading one of the day. And no losers and only risking $500. And and, and, and I don't over trade. So it's not like you're risking $500 a trade and taking 10 trades to get these results. No, you're taking one trade and you're done. Or two trades and you're done. And that's it. You have to be responsible with your risk. And this is what your trading account should look like. It should look like this. Whoo, like that. And you, and you should be getting better, as I was talking about. You should be getting better, and it should be like that. Is it easy if you know how to trade? The answer is yes, but you have to apply yourself. You have to learn my system. You have to be responsible, and you have to be focused. And you have to be focused, 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 focused. And if I say there's nothing good to do, then you don't do anything. And if money, no gaps rate well, then you don't trade. You turn off your platform, you go to the gym. So the golden gap system gives you a high percentage success rate because it is extremely detailed. You want to know why the system has a high percentage rate? Looking at 26 things, I mean, do you realize that that's like really, that's extremely, that's a lot of things to look at. So if I'm looking at 26 things and I've got to get 20 out of those, that is an awful darn tooting amount of things that the stock has to get. But every one of them is giving me conviction and confirmation that it's going to work. Okay, that is a lot of things to get. And so you don't have like 100,000 things to get that. So when you qualify them, you have a few. In earnings season, you have more. You're really only looking for one because you only need one trade a day. So the golden gap system puts the odds in your favor so you can win. And that's what you want to do in the market. The course that I teach teaches a 26-point rating system. And that's how you find the stock to pick each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches you price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And the course teaches a more proficient way to read support and resistance correctly. The course teaches you to focus on one strategy in a detailed manner so you can become a good trader. And that should be your objective. The Golden Gap course I teach helps you achieve your goal. The goal is money in the market. The goal is to be consistently profitable and, and really to have a good quality of life. And part of that is not working all day at 4 o'clock and not trading in the morning and being obsessed about trading, giving money back in the afternoon. Trading can be easy. You really can make money, book it, and be done. And, and, and that has to be your focus. Okay. Um, I don't understand your question, G Trade, because you're kind of talking in a broken sentence there. I'm not sure if I answered your question or not, but if you could write a full sentence there because you lost me. So the class I teach teaches the rating system, the 26-point rating system. And as I was saying earlier in the webinar, you've really got to have an edge to make $1,000 a day. It's not that money in the market if you can pull it out quickly. A lot of people struggle making any money at all in the market. Why? They don't have these things. They don't have the focus. They don't have the responsibility in reference to making choices correctly about money. They're not serious enough about it. They're not serious enough about focusing on just one directional bias, whether it's long or short, and one stock. Okay, Many people are scanning and have 20 thumbnails up. You know, where's the focus? Okay, Where is the focus if you're watching 20 stocks? You think you're going to get the right entry at 932 or 933 at the exact price in Adobe at the exact moment before it falls off a planet if you're watching 20 things? You won't even have time to put it up in your jiggy, in your level two. I mean, I have it up. I'm ready. I'm like on top of my keyboard watching it. If I watch 20 things, I never get the entries I get. Never, 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 never. Let alone be able to size myself correctly for the risk to reward to be able to put the stop in. Okay, and you have to pay attention because they go so fast you have to get out. Okay, making money involves a plan of action using a specific strategy to trade, and, and that's what you really got to have. So, empower yourself to trade the market. I teach a class, as I was saying, it is called the Golden Gap course. It is a full two day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free if you take the class, it's anywhere in the world. Uh, you could be because the class is online. In fact, I had a gentleman. He did wonderful. He did the class last time, and he Hebrew is his regular language, not English. And he he did a, he did a really good job, even though we, we you know his main language is in English, and he was online doing the class. 
and he did it. So, you know, it's one of these things where the U.S. stock market has so much momentum in it. You can, you know, everybody that lives everywhere in the world wants to trade the market because of the fact that there's so many stocks and so much volatility and there's a lot of money to be made in it, even if you live in a different country. So the next class is July 11th and 12th. It is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, Eastern is where I'm in. The cost of the class is $34.99. If you are interested, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. My whole website is being redone. It should be done by July 1st. For now, if you want to sign up, you have to email me for registration papers. I am running a webinar special for anyone that's here today. If you're interested and want to sign up for the class, I'm running it through Sunday. Sunday, which is June 28th, okay? I'm going to give the swing trade letter free for the year if you sign up for the class by June 28th. This is huge. This is huge because I have some really nice swing trades that I've hauled even so far just this year. Netflix was one of them. But I'm giving the letter free for a year, which is $1,000 savings if you sign up for the class in July by Sunday the 28th. Okay? That's the deal. This is the webinar special for tonight. So again, you know, this was just... Yeah, so if I had taken 5,000 shares of this here, I figured it out. I would have made a million and a half dollars, and someday I will. Because I definitely see it. This was a great call. The stock ended up doing a stock split last night, but of course I wouldn't have known that when I made the call here. But I saw it in the chart. And it's all because I'm reading the gaps. I'm just reading all the gaps. Now, I do have a live training room. You cannot join my live training room unless you have taken and completed the Golden Gap class. I made that for a reason because I want everyone to be focused and know what to do and be serious about their trading. You can do a trial this week if you want for tomorrow and Friday. I am off next week, so you can't do a trial next week. But you can do a trial if you want Thursday and Friday. Okay? You could email me tonight if you want a trial to sit in. I know we're going to have something good tomorrow because everybody looked at some things tonight. And again, in order to join the room, you have to have done the course. Everyone in the room has done the class. And I wanted to show you here, I just got these pictures taken for the website. This is, uh, <laughs> I just got some professional pictures. I had the designer talk about living in New York and having, having a great life. The designer signed my shoes. Look at these shoes. They're red for the stock squish. And the designer signed them. I don't know if you can see it. I have to blow it up the stock squish and then signed them. These are the, this is, I actually met the designer uh, in New York. He signed my shoes, and so I'm putting them on the website. All right, let me just see here if anyone has any questions. Um, can you trade at work by using your cell phone? I have no idea what platform you use. I don't know if you can get on your platform through your cell phone. I know that you can do that with the hotcom to be in the room, Eric. But I don't know what platform you use, so that you have to check your platform, please. Does anyone else have any questions about anything? Anything at all? Anything about gas? Anything about the market? Anything about the class? Good group here tonight. Well, if you'd like more information, you can email me. Again, I'm running the special through Sunday. If you sign up for the GAP class for July, today, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'll get the swing trade letter free. And the cost of the class is $34.99. Thanks so much for having me, everyone. Oh, hold on. One more question from Melissa. Oh, no, that was Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for being here and having me thanks kathy and kevin have a wonderful evening okay all right see y'all later email me at melissa at the socks if you'd like more information you're welcome